This video is sponsored by LG Energy Solution. This is gonna be a really quick supercut of the Tesla Cybertruck delivery event. We'll talk about all the stuff Elon announced, plus all the stuff he didn't that have kind of made into the news after that and what I think it all means and some data and numbers. You're not gonna to wanna to miss that at the end. So let's jump right into it. I'm Ricky and this is 2 Da Vinci. delivery event. So we actually had to come up with a special ultra strong Tesla designed steel alloy. So this metal did not exist before. We needed something that you could actually manufacture that would have basically no corrosion, that didn't need paint, but you can still make it in volume. And part of the reason that it has this angular shape is you can't actually stamp these body panels. The body panels would break the stamping machine. Because of the steel exoskeleton, it actually has more torsional rigidity than a sports car. It has more torsional stiffness than a McLaren P1. Now you may remember an incident four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't quite go as planned. <laughs> and um, Franz, uh, maybe we should try it again. <laughs> uh, yeah, well. <laughs> The glass is tough, basically, that's what we're saying. Uh, you don't have to worry about like rocks hitting the glass and cracking the glass. This, gla this uh, glass is, is basically rock proof. It also makes the car very quiet. The thing that you'll appreciate when you drive the car is how smooth and quiet it is. Things like rollover, because the center of gravity is so low, it doesn't roll over. And if you're ever in an argument with another car, you will win. In, in movies, you sometimes see the hero or heroine uh, hiding behind the car door while being shot with bullets. That doesn't actually work. Un unless you're driving a Cybertruck. If Al Capone showed up with a Tommy gun and emptied the entire magazine into the car door, you would still be alive. People say, like, well, why did you make it bulletproof? I'm like, why not? <laughs> I was on the Joe Rogan show. And Joe bet me a dollar that his armor-piercing steelhead arrow would go through the car. No, he owes me a dollar. <laughs> so. Strength is great, but is this, is this a, you know, perhaps just a showpiece, or can it do actual work? How does it work as a real everyday truck? Well, here we have the future towing the future. Basically, if you can fit any cargo in, in, the, in the trunk or in the bed, you can basically move it around. So it's got over a ton of payload capability, but you could really put more than that in it. You can tow over 11,000 pounds, and it's got a super tough composite bed, no liner needed. The bed is six foot long, four foot wide, and you can fit four by eight pieces of plywood in with the back down. There's something uh, in the truck world called a, a truck pull. This is really the, the, the key test of how much power does your truck actually have? So you have to pull this 40,000 pound sled. When we went to the track, we said, well, what's the best that you've seen? I said, well, it'd be the Ford F-350 diesel. It was like, well, let's, let's put our truck up against that. The guy who runs the truck pool said, there's no way, there's no way. So well, let's try it. Let's see what happens. We actually had to slightly turn the car at the end so it didn't hit the wall. <laughs> you have here a car that is bullet tough and can outpull an F-350 diesel. It has a massive towing capacity, massive bed. It's basically an incredibly useful truck. It's not just some grandstanding showpiece like me. Um, now what about performance? It has an adaptive air suspension, so no matter what the load is, it can set the, the right height, low height, anything. It'll automatically adjust the damping according to how much load it's carrying and the road conditions. It has a 17-inch ground clearance. That's a true 17 inches. Typically with a truck, you'll get the differential hanging down low, of the rear differential, and that's what you'll high side on a rock. But this has a completely flat bed, so you could, you could drive over basically anything. We've been waiting four years for this truck, and for good reason, it's gonna be a big deal. But so much has changed in that time, like 
worldwide battery production, and why I have to tell you about our sponsor this week, LG Energy Solution. The LG Energy Solution Michigan plant broke ground all the way back in 2010 and was operating by 2012. Talk about vision. It has powered a slew of early electric vehicles, and they're currently adding a second building, which will take their production from 5 to 25 gigawatt hours per year. Now, that's how you scale up EV production. They are a world leader in battery tech with over 2,700 patents. They build batteries in various form factors like cylindrical and pouch for all sorts of companies. In many ways, the key ingredient for all electric vehicles is great battery manufacturing. We toured LG Energy Solution Michigan and it was absolutely mind blowing. I learned so much about how batteries are made, the incredible precision required for making a battery manufacturing plant, and so much more. To check out our deep dive video on LG Energy Solution and its workplace environment, check out the links in the video description. Huge thanks to LG and you for supporting the show. We actually took the Cybertruck on a Baja rally drive. This is insane off-road capability. It has locking differentials, rear torque vectoring, and the crazy thing is they'll do this all in comfort. It has steer-by-wire, which is how modern jets are designed, which gives you variable gain. So if you turn the steering yoke a small amount in the parking lot, it will turn the wheels a lot. But if you turn it on a highway, it turns the wheels a small amount. It dynamically adjusts how much the wheels turn according to what your speed is. And it has a turning circle less than a Model S. It has incredible low speed man maneuverability. It's the first time that a car is moving to a 48 volt uh, low voltage architecture from 12 volts, which has been around for 100 years. We have Ethernet comms, distributed controllers, allows for 70% less wire in the car. So let's take it to the racetrack and see how, how does the Cybertruck perform against a Porsche 911. And I, sh I should say, this is, this is an actual Porsche. It's, we literally just got it from the dealer. 2023 Porsche 911. But wait, there's more. So the... the, the <laughs> It can tow a Porsche 911 across a quarter mile faster than the Porsche 911 can go by itself. I should say tougher than bullets. Uh, tow pretty much anything. Uh, faster than a 911 while towing a 911. <laughs> and deliveries bring, begin now. Thank you. It was a pretty short event, honestly. They didn't really say anything that we didn't expect, but here's some really quick highlights. First of all, they designed their own stainless steel alloy for this truck. And the reason is to make it strong and bulletproof and all the things that they promised, while also being able to be molded and built into the shape of a truck. All first stuff and pretty groundbreaking. Second, it has a torsional rigidity that's higher than a McLaren P1 sports car. Torsional rigidity is, imagine the four wheels moving in this direction. That's what gives a car really good lateral stability and that sports car feeling. This time around, Hans threw a baseball instead of a steel ball bearing and it didn't shatter or anything else that was good and now the glass has been downgraded from bulletproof to shatterproof but the good news is no more front windshield replacements i've had to change my model 3 already one time cost like 1200 bucks looking forward to not having to do that anymore also that glass is going to be really quiet so i think the cabin is going to be way more comfortable than any tesla before it they showed a little bit of crash testing. I have a feeling this truck is gonna be the safest truck money can buy, just like every other Tesla. They showed some footage of the truck taking bullet shots and, and surviving various rounds and glocks and stuff. I, I don't know about a rifle, but it's pretty much bulletproof. That's a feature that you'd have to pay a lot more money to make on like a BMW 7 Series Protect or one of those like, you know, estate cars for dignitaries and stuff. It has 11,000 pounds of towing, 2,500 pound hauling, which are both less than promised, right? They promised 14,000 pounds towing and 3,500 pounds hauling, but they're still on the high end of most pickup trucks, gas trucks included. A six foot bed, six by four foot, which means you can transport four by eight plywood sheets, something I do often with the tailgate down. Good to know. It has a drag coefficient of 0.335, which is actually a little bit higher, I think, based on data I saw than the F-150 Lightning, but still really impressive for a truck. The average gas truck is like 0.5. That's why they're so inefficient and gas hogs. It also has 
35 inch tires and a maximum of 17 inches of ground clearance. Really good stuff, which is really important for off-roading, just like having locking diffs, which this has, and it even has rear torque vectoring and a steer by wire system. Steer by wire is the same thing that aircraft use. Instead of actual direct linkages like we have now to the steering wheel, it's a PlayStation 5 controller, and all those inputs are taken to the wheels and a computer handles all that. The cool thing there is that the turning ratio can change, right? You can just move the wheel this much and be making U-turns around a parking lot. And on the freeway, this would translate to very small motions to lane change, something I think people will appreciate. It actually turns better thanks to the rear wheel steer than a Model S. And this is also the first truck to show off a 48 volt low voltage architecture. Since like the history of cars, that little battery that you jumpstart in your old gas car, those were 12 volt. So all the low voltage applications, most of the window regulators are like little lights and things, were always 12 volt. But now Tesla's going to a 48 volt architecture for all their low voltage stuff. The high voltage is gonna be 400 or 800, we'll have to wait and see. But the other cool thing here, and this is something most cars are gonna do, is they have ethernet communications. This means about 70% less wiring. This is a huge breakthrough that will come in most cars. Instead of having power running through wires all throughout wiring harnesses throughout the car, you can just have a big line of power that you can run to a motor and then like an ethernet communication port, very thin wire that just sends signals of what to do. Instead of having to run power throughout the car in various harnesses. Now for the really crazy electric vehicle stuff that you're all used to now with Teslas, the Cybertruck in its highest Cyber Beast configuration can beat a Porsche 911 while towing a Porsche 911. In the video that they showed, I noticed off the line, the Cybertruck kind of locked up a little bit with the wheels and I was like, wow, that's a weird launch. Later on, they revealed that it was towing a 911, a 3,000-ish pound sports car while doing it. That's just crazy. And this is that SmackDown component of the Cybertruck that people are probably not realizing, but we'll get to that in a minute. Zero to 60 happens in 2.6 seconds. The truck will weigh over 6,000 pounds, so it'll qualify for that big car business credit where you can depreciate the entire car the first year you own it. For people who buy things like Hummers and G-Wagons for this reason, this will qualify as well. In terms of pricing, all the prices have gone up, and from all the comments I've seen so far, this is the sticking point for most people, is the 39000 dollar base model is gone now the rear wheel drive you know base model is over sixty thousand the dual motor all-wheel drive model is around eighty thousand and the cyber beast the tri motor is going to be about a hundred thousand dollars all those prices have gone up like twenty thirty thousand from what they were promised that is the nature of it and that will um definitely probably result in a couple of cancellations, I would imagine. This is a look at all the specs. We'll just put them up on screen so you can kind of get a deep dive. One missed opportunity is that they didn't talk much about vehicle to home to power your house if the power were to go out, for example. But the rear bed does have a NEMA 1450 plug, which means 50 amps at around 240 volts, which is around 11.5 kilowatts of power output. Now that could definitely power your house. They didn't get into details about like if they have hardware to enable that, but Hopefully they do sell some sort of a kit like the Ford Lightning and hopefully cheaper than Lightning at $12,000, but a kit that would allow you to power your house if the power goes out. That's a huge draw of having a big battery in your garage. On their website, they now show some of the details about the interior. For example, there's a massive 18.5 inch touchscreen in the front and a 9.4 inch touchscreen in the back. Kind of like the new Model S, the refreshers with the X and the S. Also, it has a really good 15 speaker audio system with two subwoofers, kind of like the Model S and X I would imagine as well. It has biodefense mode, which is that hospital grade HEPA filter, which protects you from 99.97% of airborne particles. One point of contention I saw in a lot of the live streams I was watching is about the light bar, which was always shown as that you know big light bar for going off road. And it's not gonna probably ship on the truck. And the reason is legal. There are some jurisdictions, some states that don't allow you to have such light bars mounted on the top of your truck. So as a result, you might have to go to Tesla and have it installed after the fact. Tesla claims that the top light bar can put out light as far as 525 yards, which is 
absolutely amazing. There's also some really cool camping accessories. Base camp fits up to two adults comfortably and pumps up in minutes. So I think that's going to be a big draw is the off-roading lifestyle adventure people. One thing to note is about the spare tire. Because of Tesla's battery pack taking up all the space under the bed, there's no room to put a spare tire underneath like most pickup trucks have. As a result, you'll have to strap a spare tire to the bed, which means you'll lose that space. But if there's no AAA where you're going, you might want to take that option. As we mentioned, about 0.33 for the drag coefficient for the Cybertruck in line with the Ford F-150 Lightning. Not as good as obviously the Tesla Model X, for example, but still better than gas trucks. A Dodge Ram has a drag coefficient of 0.59 and an F-150 Raptor about 0.56. So this is significantly more aerodynamic than that. As an engineer, let me break down something that you guys are probably thinking about. And I think the biggest let down is range. We were told the truck that I reserved would have 500 plus miles of range, and that's not happening. We're closer to 340, which is disappointing, right? But let's contextualize this a little bit. A Ford Raptor has a 36 gallon gas tank, and one gallon of gasoline has around 33.4 kilowatt hours of energy, which means that a fully filled up Ford Raptor has 1,200 kilowatt hours of energy on board. The Cybertruck has 123. That's not official. We'll know more. But let's just say that report that leaked yesterday is right. That is about one-tenth of the energy that the Raptor has. Now, the Raptor, fully loaded at 17 miles per gallon, can do about 600 miles. So, with 10 times the energy on board, the Raptor can go twice as far. That just shows you just how wasteful gasoline is. But at the same time, the Cybertruck just does not have a lot of energy on board. And if you were to tow that 340 miles for the mid-range truck, can easily be 180 miles, right? And that will be the big sticking point and why this truck probably will not be for everybody. But I will get back to why that probably is okay. And to compare it to the Ford F-150 Lightning, which is probably a benchmark in this category, that has 131 kilowatt hour battery pack and goes about 320 miles. So the Cybertruck is right in that range. And like we mentioned, Lightning is no slouch either with a really svelte drag coefficient as well. Now, the one big news that I think is going to break over the next couple of days is more information about this range extender. People kept talking about this. They're going to offer this range extender option, which will boost range from 340 to 470 miles. And the way this will work is it'll be a big, imagine like a toolbox that you load in the bed of the truck. And that will add around 46.7 kilowatt hours. My basic math, right? Here's the crazy part about that. That's the power of about 3.5 power walls, which would weigh about 875 pounds. Obviously, the chemistry might be different. There might be other optimizations, but this is not like some little thing you're going to be loading in and out all the time. This is something you're going to want to put in. You would need a forklift probably, and Tesla will have to install it for you. So it's an option, but it's going to cost a lot, and it's not going to be easy to take in and out. I think people have this idea of like a little box you just load in and plug in a cable and get all this extra range, but that's just not the case 46 kilowatt hours of battery storage just weighs a lot one thing in my 39 years of life on this planet i've always noticed is pickup trucks never seem to be carrying anything honestly from my experience whenever i've seen a pickup truck it's a gentleman or lady by themselves in a truck nothing in the bed just alone Right, So I looked into this, and it turns out, yeah, I'm not too far off. 75% of truck owners use their truck for towing one time a year or no times a year. Okay, Nearly 70% of truck owners go off-roading one or less times a year. And a full 35% of truck owners use their truck for hauling, it means putting something in the bed, either once or no times a year, not even the bed of the truck. So yeah. When we think about all the things that we need, we, a truck has to have this. It has to go 500 miles. I think we go a little crazy, right? Honestly, most people don't use it that way. I want to talk a little bit about who this truck is going to be for then, right? Lifestyle buyers, people who buy the Jeep Cherokee, the Jeep Wrangler, Ford Bronco, Subarus, those kinds of people who like to go camping and hiking or avid outdoors people are going to love this truck. They're going to absolutely love it. This the Cybertruck will be better than all of those, right? Then there's like the light truck buyer who needs to buy a couch once in a while or move a fridge, but likes having a truck for daily driving. People who buy Tacomas and Honda Ridgelines, that kind of crowd, would love this truck as well. Then there's like the really hardcore off-roaders, people who like Ford Raptors, FJ Cruisers, you know, Jeeps, G-Wagons, Range Rovers, that sort of thing. 
Hot take, I think the Cybertruck is going to crush all of them. The power of electric motors, instant torque at zero, modulating power all the time, torque vectoring, and the fact that there's nothing hanging down. You have a full skid plate under the body of the car, and really there's just tires that pop out, means you're going to have incredible off-roading prowess. Also, the front wheels, as I mentioned when I saw it in person, are so close to the front and the departure and approach angles, this truck is going to be an absolute off-roading beast. Then, of course, there's like the Rodeo Drive crowd, right? People who drive G-Wagons and Beverly Hills Range Rovers. They're going to probably like this truck, too, because those people are after attention. They want people to know that they've got something that you don't. And I think the Cybertruck, for the next two years, will be that thing. There will be nothing on the road that will get attention more than the Cybertruck, and I think those people will buy it too. There's only one category of truck driver I would not recommend the Cybertruck for, and that is hardcore truck users who tow stuff and are constantly hauling things and driving long distances. If you use your truck in that way, I think the Cybertruck is just not gonna be the truck. And I think what Elon and the Tesla team realized at some point in development is, you know, we'd have to double stack batteries. We'd have to do something to try to get 500 miles of range. The cost would be even higher. They'd be harder to make and more difficult to sell. You, they'd commoditize more of the cells that come off the line. They decided, look, let's just target the 85% truck buyer. And I think for those people, this truck is perfect. But if you're a hardcore truck driver, you're hauling your horses around on your farm and stuff. I just don't think this will be the truck for you. And that's okay. There's no one tool for every application. It's just a function of those batteries and that damn physics of chemistry and the fact that energy storage is tr tricky right now in an electric world. But it will get better. And maybe the Cybertruck Gen 2, you know, eight years from now, will have 500 miles of range. But we just don't have that yet. I want to close with one final thought. I don't really like car shows anymore. I don't really go to car shows because I'm bored at the idea of people showing off these crazy radical ideas that never make it to market. We have Netflix now and anime and we're so distracted and entertained. We don't need crazy looks at the future that will never come. I admire Tesla for what they've done and I actually thought the event was a hit. Here's why. As Elon kept saying, finally the future looks like the future. And that's what the Cybertruck is. There's nothing else like it. When you see this thing in person, you can't stop but look and, and stare. It has that level of clout. It just feels ambitious. Look at every other truck out there right now. The Dodge Ram, the F-150. Here's, here's an example of what an engineering meeting might look like. All right, we got the next F-150 to make. I know. Let's make the grill 18% bigger. Excellent idea. All right. Let's go get lunch. That's it. That's about the level of, of innovation happening. There are, There is none. Every truck pretty much looks the same. No one is taking a stab in the dark, uh, a, a crazy leap of faith, or any kind of risk. And Tesla did. Tesla showed a radical prototype concept car and built it. Tell me the other companies doing that. For that reason alone, bravo, Tesla. I, I love it. I have a reservation. Unfortunately, it's probably going to be a year before I get mine. But when my time comes, I think I'm taking it. I mean, there are some other good electric trucks out there too, don't get me wrong. But I just, there's something about the Cybertruck and I really want to know what you guys think. Would you buy one? Do you have a reservation? Are you going to keep it? Does it have enough range? Sound off in the comments below. And if this has been insightful, hit that like button and subscribe. Join us. We want to just cover the cool engineering happening. And for whatever reason, a lot of the cool engineering happening just seems to be happening at Tesla. It just where we are. That is a quick look at the Cybertruck. Thank you so much for watching. And until next week, check out this video next.